right <clears throat> see after now we discussed uh, register organization of 8085 microprocessor and control unit control unit means uh, timing and control operations of 8085 microprocessors like uh, IO by M bar read bar write bar and some interrupt lines all these are comes under uh, timing and control operations because which controls the total internal operations right then our next topic is assembly level language program okay assembly level language program we will start right so now in this assembly level language program first we will go through the basic definitions in that uh, one definition is i think already studied this one compiler what is the function of compiler which converts which converts a uh, high level language high level language to mission level language right which converts the high level to mission level high level means general our english language or general used language this type of language are called high level language like a uh, or c language in that language there we are using all the symbols plus minus and all these some english words right if uh, right for and all this and some different different symbols we are using here so this language is called high level language easy understanding language right now mission level language mission level language is only zeros and ones why zeros and ones because your mission is nothing but processor processor this processor is designed with internally basic semiconductor devices those devices are transistors diode fit and all these devices operation is on operation and off operation right so on operation means it takes as a one and off operation means it takes as a zero that's why the processor can understand only zeros and ones this language is also called as binary language right binary language so now we are writing some commands all these commands to the processor that's why compiler converts the this high level language to binary language binary language is nothing but which consists zeros and ones that is the general function of compiler right similarly we have another function assembler assembler this assembler converts the assembly level to binary binary means again machine language okay so assembly level to binary language here assembly level language is nothing but micro instructions micro instructions our processor is micro processor because the processor is internally implemented using micro instructions that's why the name is given here micro processor so here we are writing the total program in terms of micro instructions and uh, this micro instructions uh, are like a uh, uh, we are writing one add b right otherwise move a comma b these type of instructions are called micro instructions here because here the large word is compressed into small word so here movement of b registered data into a registered data this is our large word this large word is compared into small word without any symbols without any symbols here we are not using symbols here 
like these type of symbols right so these type of instructions are called micro instructions and these micro instructions are connected into binary why binary because our processor can understand only zeros and ones so conversion from assembly level to binary purpose assembler is used is it okay assembler converts the assembly level language into binary level language so this is the function of this is the function of assembler right now the general instruction format i'm explaining now general instruction format the general instruction format is divided into two parts it is divided into two parts one is called a code and another is called operand this opcode explains the type of operation type of operation like which type of operation it requires addition or movement of data or and operation the total thing is explained by this opcode and another part is there operand this explains the source and destination locations okay source and uh, destination locations so what is the meaning of source and destination location see i'm taking one example move a comma b see move a comma b here this move this explains the movement of data this command this explains the movement of data this is nothing but your type of operation and later this movement of data from b register to a register so this is acts as a source right and this is acts as a destination destination so this operation is performing in between two locations one is source location destination location the source location is here b register destination location is a register this is explained by operand here this structure this structure is explained by operand and move move is nothing but type of operation the type of operation is explained by opcode okay so our total instruction is we dividing into two parts like this move and ab so this explains the type of operation this explains the that operation is performing in between two locations those locations explained by operand okay this is the general instruction format according to the instruction format instruction format all these instructions are divided into different different groups okay that group is now i'm discussing with the uh, according to operand okay according to operand all the instructions are divided into different different groups those groups are called addressing modes okay so those groups are called addressing modes so now we will discuss one one addressing mode here in that one is register addressing mode see addressing modes is i am writing with am here okay register addressing mode so these addressing modes are according to the operand only only source and destination locations right according to that we are writing one example move a comma b see here it performs this some operations what is that operation movement of data this movement of data in between two registers one is b register another is 
a raised term okay so simply we can define here any operation is performing in between registers are called register addressing modes okay see any operation like i am taking another example also one is add b the meaning of this one is a registered data adds with b registered data and the result is stored into a register see the complete addition operation is performing in between two registers so your operand consists only registers only registers this type of addressing mode is called register addressing mode okay so any operation is performing in between registers the type of addressing mode is called register addressing mode right now direct addressing mode direct addressing mode these instructions explains operand consists address location of the memory operand consists address location of the memory one example lda 2000h okay so this is your operand this is operand this operand explains the address address of memory which explains the address of memory so address of the memory directly mentioned in operand these type of addressing modes are called direct addressing modes now which type of operation the operation is your load accumulator lda explains the load accumulator so which data it has to load this address location data 200h address location data is stored into accumulator the total thing is explained by this instruction so memory address location is directly given here so this type of addressing modes are called direct addressing mode right so another addressing mode is indirect addressing mode indirect addressing mode. this is also similar to the direct addressing mode only it performs the operations with memory locations okay external memory device but this address is mentioned directly here but we are giving here this address is indirectly the indirect is like this same operation i am writing in another model like this move a comma m this m explains the memory location memory location okay so this explains the memory location right in 8085 microprocessor whenever this m is given right whenever this m is given directly it takes the address from hl register pair hl register pair this is also called as this is also called as default register pair because your instruction consists of m then directly your assembler takes the address location from the hl pair register so hl pair register in hl register some data is there l register some data is there any one data just i am assuming 2000 right now accumulator so this memory location data is stored into accumulator regard this here this memory location data is stored into accumulator see this address location is indirectly mentioned in hl register these type of addressing modes are called indirect addressing mode okay so in 8085 microprocessor whenever operand is mentioned with m then that is comes under indirect addressing mode right now another addressing mode immediate addressing mode right immediate addressing mode see in this processor we can find easily here 
whenever your instruction is given with i representation mvi whenever this i is given all these are comes under immediate addressing mode right so one example i am writing mvi 08h see move immediate i indicates the immediate what is immediate this is our immediate data directly this data is stored into accumulator see here also we are giving number and here also we are giving number but this number number is without any i representation okay without any i representation any number is given this is acts as a memory location address right and with i is mentioned here and any data is given this is acts as a immediate data so this data is directly stored into accumulator is it okay so these are the general addressing modes of 8085 microprocessors right now we have another small topic here types of instructions types of instructions see these types of instructions is according to the the memory occupying capacity right memory occupying capacity like see one byte instruction set one byte instruction set one byte instruction set meaning is see here we are writing the complete uh, uh, program in terms of assembly level language program okay one example move a comma b later we are using assembler assembler what is the function of assembler which converts the this assembly language into binary language binary language so this binary language occupies the one byte data one byte means how many bits here eight bits okay the op code of instruction occupies the one byte in one byte memory these type of instructions are called one byte instruction set you got this point here see op code of instruction operational code of this instruction how many bytes here eight bits eight bits is nothing but one byte so which occupies the one byte memory these type of instructions are called one byte instruction set right this is one example so simply we can uh, remember here in 8085 microprocessor this is your operand right this operand does not consist any data does not consist any data directly it comes under one byte instruction set right similarly two byte instruction set two byte instruction set so two byte instruction is see one more example i am taking mvi a comma 08h now see after converting into mission code means binary code this occupies the one byte right and already some data is there this data also occupies the one byte total how many bytes here two bytes memory so these type of instructions are called two byte instruction set two byte instruction set see easy understanding is here this operand this operand consists of eight bit data whenever eight bit data is given here this purpose one byte and the remaining purpose one byte totally how many bytes here two byte instruction this type of instructions are called two byte instruction set okay and in 8085 we have three byte instruction set also there three byte instruction set three byte instruction set is again same definition the op code of the instruction takes three bytes memory how many bytes three bytes see this purpose one byte okay and here some data is mentioned How much data? Two zero 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 H. In terms of hexadecimal, each each digit is four bits. 
4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. Total how many? 16 bits. So 2 bytes. So 1 byte for this uh, uh, this operation and the remaining 2 bytes for the uh, operand. Completed occupies how many bytes? 3 bytes. Okay. The opcode of instruction occupies 3 bytes of memory. Those type of instructions are called 3 byte instruction set. See, these instructions are classified into different different types according to the memory occupation. One is 1 byte instruction. Opcode takes the only 1 byte information. 2 byte instruction set. Opcode takes the 2 byte of that 2 byte of memory and uh, 3 byte instruction. The opcode takes the 3 byte of memory. See, easily we can remember here your operand does not consist any data. All these are comes under 1 byte instruction set. If the operand consists only 1 byte information, 1 byte data, these are comes under 2 byte instructions. And uh, if the operand consists of 2 byte, operand consists 2 bytes and one more byte is compulsory for this operation. So totally how many bytes here? 3 bytes. Is it okay? So in this operand, the data consists 16 bit data. Then it is comes under 3 byte instruction set. Okay. This classification according to the memory occupancy. Right. And here another small definition. T cycle. T cycle or we can write as a T state. T state. This explains the one clock time period of microprocessor. Right? See, 8085 microprocessor, externally we are collecting some clock signals. Those clock signals are like this. Then the time period of one clock signal. This is our time period. Time period of one clock signal is called a T state. So, how much time period takes? Approximately 320 nanoseconds. Why 320 nanoseconds? Because it is derived from frequency 1 by F. So, the frequency of 8085 microprocessor is 3.072 megahertz. So, 1 upon 3.072 megahertz is 320 nanoseconds. This explains the T state. Right? So, here we have to find out a time requirement to complete one instruction. The purpose, we require number of T states here. Okay, so one is called T state, and uh, another I am discussing here machine cycle. Okay, machine cycle or machine cycle. This explains the time required, time required to complete. To complete one operation, time required to complete one operation like memory read, right? Memory write, I will read, I will write. All these operations are called one operation. See, memory read is one operation. Memory write is one operation. I/O read is one operation. I/O write is one operation. These are called uh, single operations. So to complete these operations purpose, it requires some time. That time is called machine cycle here. Okay, machine cycle here. So this machine cycle, memory read and I/O read, memory write, I/O write. These operation purpose internally it takes here three T states. Okay, in 8085 microprocessor, it is defined. These operation purpose, it takes three T states. This is called one machine cycle here. Right? Similarly, we have another operation that is a fetching operation, upcode fetching operation. Upcode fetching operation. This is also one operation we can say. So, time required to complete upcode fetching operation is four T states. 40 states up code fetching is nothing but reading instruction reading instruction 
that is uh, upcode fetching for this purpose four t states it requires you right and one more operation also there bus upcode fetching bus upcode fetching this bus upcode fetching requires six t states okay six t states now we can write we can write here mission cycle the minimum time is here how much time it requires 3 t states maximum time is 6 t states so according to the internal operation sometimes it requires 3 t sometimes 4 t sometimes 6 t operations these are nothing but machine cycle time required to complete one operations okay and uh, one more is see one more is here instruction cycle instruction cycle this explains the time required to complete one instruction okay see previously we discussed only one operation now i am calling here one instruction right so one instruction means complete operation what is general complete operation first initially fetching is compulsory right first it has to read the instruction after fetching it performs the decoding okay decoding operation later decoding operation it performs the execution this complete operation purpose it complete operation purpose it takes some time the time is called instruction cycling okay and internally each operation this fetching is one operation decoding is one operation execution is one operation right so all these are called internal mission cycles here right so fetching and decoding simply we can call it as a upcode fetching upcode fetching and another is execution so this purpose one mission cycle and this purpose one mission cycle depends on the type of the operation it requires internally number of mission cycles here okay number of mission cycles so the minimum mission cycle is one mission cycle complete one instruction cycle is minimum is one mission cycle right and maximum is it takes the five mission cycles here okay to complete enough one instruction purpose it takes some time the time is minimum is one mission cycle and maximum is five mission cycles right see all these are the basic definitions we study now right so using these definitions here we have to discuss programs right so before the programs we have some instructions first we should know what is the operation of each instruction right so what is the operation of each instruction that instruction takes uh, how many how many t states means how much time required and that instruction is which type of addressing mode all this we have to discuss now here is it okay so up to now we discussed the general introduction to the or assembly level language program one is a t cycle and a machine cycle and instruction cycle